Warning, the following video may contain traces of mathematics. Hi, I'm Sven from the Beam Music Project. A while ago, we created a simple synth. There's an issue with it. I will show you what, why and how to solve it. Probably you already noticed the problem. If you load my simple synth or my simple polysynth and you choose the saw wave or the square wave, then it sounds dirty, especially when higher notes are played. Let's analyze this problem. Load my simple synth or my simple polysynth and a spectral analyzer. If we play a sine wave, then we see a single peak at the note frequency, as it should be, and it sounds clean. If we play a triangle wave, then we additionally see harmonics with clean descending peaks, as it should be, and thus the triangle wave sounds clean too, only for very high notes we may see some little artifacts. If we now play a square wave, then we see harmonics plus a lot of artifacts, and it gets even worse if we play even higher notes. Ideally, it should sound like this and we should only see peaks for the harmonics. The same problem for the saw wave. But why does this happen? Is our formula wrong? No, the formula creates sine, triangle, saw and square waves with mathematic precision. The reason is, we are too precise. Too precise for digital sound processing especially on the edges, for all waveformless edges. Let's take a closer look to our square wave. We know every sound can be represented by overlaying multiple sine waves. A perfect square wave is the sum of an infinite number of sine waves following this formula. This term represents the frequency for each of the harmonics. Thus, we have got an infinite number of harmonics with increasing frequencies, even in the non-audible range. The limit in digital signal processing is the resolution. What happens if the signal density comes close to or even exceeds the resolution? Then the signal can't be resolved anymore and produces more or less interesting artifacts. This phenomenon is called aliasing. This also happens in audio. If a signal frequency exceeds the half of the frame rate, the so-called Nyquist frequency, then it can't be correctly resolved anymore and produces aliasing artifacts. And, in the case of our square wave, it sprays around lots of unwanted peaks in the spectrogram. But how to prevent this problem? There are multiple ways. First of all, we can build our square wave by synthesizing a set of sine wave following this formula, step by step, till just below the Nyquist frequency. This would produce the best sine wave we can get, without any aliasing artifacts. The disadvantage? It is computationally very expensive. According to our formula, there will be some 120 sine waves needed for a 100Hz square wave at 48000Hz frame rate. Another option would be oversampling and filtering. In this case, we would use our mathematically precise square wave formula to generate signals at much higher frame rate, the oversampling rate. Then we would filter out all signals above the original Nyquist frequency. And finally, we would have to do downsampling to the original frame rate. This method is indeed used a lot for processing sound, like in saturation plugins, distortion plugins, and so on. But it's a bit stupid to use it for synthesis. Why to clean afterwards if you could produce clean sound? And it would be computationally expensive too. For reasonable quality, you need huge oversampling rates. The third way is to make our square wave look like layered sine waves, at least at the problematic edges. There are several techniques. Most common are blit, plap and polyplap. I could make a whole video about comparison of the methods and their mathematical background, but nope, enough theory for this video. The polyplap, polynomial band limited step function, is the simplest one and produces the best results. Only the edges are rounded with a simple quadratic function. And for every other part, we can use a mathematically precise function. 
Therefore, this method is really fast. Enough theory, let's do coding. Duplicates my simple polythins project. If you haven't got it yet, then you can download it from the LV2 tutorial repository. Rename it to my simple polyblepsynth and also in the URIs in the manifest, the plugin turtle file, here also adapt the name, and also in the descriptor. The key class is where all the sound synthesis takes place. So let's go to key, to the synth method. Here we will simply add polyblep to the square wave and to the saw wave. So we firstly declare a polyblep method and implement it with inline. It returns, in the case of ptrans is below minus 1 or higher than 1, 0. And if it's below or equal to 0, then it returns ptrans plus 1 square. Otherwise, minus ptrans minus 1 square. Now we add this to the square wave function for the jump at position 0. And we've got another jump at position 0.5, but this jump is the other way around, therefore minus polyblep, and p shifted by minus 0.5. There's an issue with the parameter. p ranges from 0 to 1, but polyblep takes values relative to the point 0, which also may be negative. To fix this, we use fmod, shifted to the right by 0.5, and again to the left by 0.5. Now it ranges between minus 0.5 and 0.5, and no need to do anything for the second jump, as there the value is between minus 0.5 and 0.5 anyway. And there's one more issue. Now polyblep is applied over the whole phase. But we only want it in a very small area around the jumps. Just a few samples. Let's say two samples for each side. So in total four samples, which is just enough to go below the Nyquist frequency. Therefore, we have to squeeze the polyblep function by the transition size. So we declare such a function and implement it. It simply returns two samples divided by the number of samples for a whole phase, which is the rate divided by frequency. Hard coding the number of samples is not a good way. Feel free to use a macro definition or a global const expression instead. Then we only need to divide our phase parameter by the transition size. To the saw wave. Here we only have got one jump, at position 0, as in the square wave, but the other way around. Therefore, minus polyblep and the parameters as in the first jump of the square wave. But what about our triangle wave? The native method already provides relatively good results. So it's a question to further improve it or not. But it's not that easy. And this is now the point where the mathematics start. The problem? Polyblep works on jumps but not on kinks. But a kink is mathematically nothing else than the integration of a jump, and a triangle wave is nothing else than the integration of a square wave. So let's integrate a square wave, declare a method, and start with the implementation. The integration is the calculation of the area under the curve. To integrate the polyblep square wave, we divide it into six sections. The first section follows the formula 1 minus t minus 1 square which is 1 minus t square plus 2t minus 1. And this is minus t square plus 2t. And integrated minus t to the power of 3 divided by 3 plus t square. Let's create a method for the integration of the first part. p will be between 0 and 1, as this is the range we look at, and keep this in mind. Define this method and return the result from our formula. Then the next integration. This is a simple one. The integration of a constant value results in a rectangle, and the area of this rectangle is 1 times p. Thus, there is no need to create an extra method for it. The third one is simple too, as this is a mirrored first one. Thus, it's a reverse integral, which is calculated by integrate f1 of the whole section, minus integrate f1 of the not covered section, which is 1 minus p. Also not necessary to write a method for it. The integrations 4 to 6 are the same as 1 to 3, only flipped vertically. Therefore, we only need to change the sign. To our integrate square wave method, we start with a value of 0 and add step by step the integrated parts. At the end, we return value. We also need to know the size of the steps, especially the transition size. All other steps can be calculated from it. And for convenience, let's define a variable called prest, 
to get the remaining fraction of p. If p is less or equal than the transition, then value is increased by integrate f1 p, but p have to be converted to the 0 to 1 range expected by integrate f1, and the resulting integral needs to be squeezed back to the transition size. If p is not less or equal than the transition, then we take the whole integral of the first section and reduce p rest by the transition size. Now the second section. If p is less or equal than the end of the second section, then value is simply increased by p rest, the simple second integration. Too simple for a known method, as you remember. Otherwise, value is increased by the whole section. 0.5 minus 2 times transition size. And p rest has to be decreased too. Then the third section. If p is less or equal than the third section, 0.5, then value is increased as that before. The integral of the full section minus the integral of 1 minus p rest divided by the transition size. And this has to be squeezed to the transition size. And if p is higher than 0.5, then the value has to be increased by the full integral of the third section, scaled to the transition size. p rest has to be decreased by this section size. And we recursively call integrate square wave for the rest, as this is the same as the first half but upside down, and therefore we have to subtract this. Now to its implementation in Zynth. Replace the existing term by integrate square wave p. We have to scale it by 4 and move it down by minus 1. Feel free to shift the phase by 0.25 so it syncs with the other waveforms. That's it! Time to compile. Use G++ and the parameters as before. Create a new folder in your LV2 directory and copy the binary and the TTL files. Time to test. The polypleb square wave now sounds clean and does not produce any additional peaks except the harmonics. Only for very high notes we will get some artifacts, but much less than for the native square wave. The same for the saw wave. Clean sound and no artifacts for low notes and only a few for high notes. And also the triangle wave takes benefit from polypleb and the integration. No artifacts at all. Now we can make a graphical user interface for this plugin, in the next video tutorial. In programming LV2 plugins from scratch too.